going on? Welcome to Strength for Today's Man. This is volume 47, and I want to say thank you to those of you that are on the audio side listening to the podcast, because we're on every audio platform that's out there, and I noticed that Anchor is now a part of Spotify, and that was one of the podcasts platforms I was using so Spotify has acquired Anchor and those companies are together now but if you're on YouTube and you haven't subscribed already please do so like the video and subscribe to the channel that way others will have an opportunity through the algorithms to find these particular podcast videos on YouTube And please, by all means, share it. Share it to as many people as possible. Just get the link and just, boom, send it out there. I appreciate that so very much. Today, I want to go to Matthew 25, 14, and 15. This is a very familiar passage of Scripture that I've heard taught and preached many, many times over my lifetime. And it says, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one, he gave five talents. To another, he gave two talents. To another, he gave one talent. To each, according to his ability. Then he went away. That's it. He just said, I'm out. See you when I see you. So what I want to talk about in this particular devotion of the today is be wise with it. When I think about far as being wise and being creative and being responsible, it, it brings to mind a question. And this is kind of like, you know, sideline. But what's the first thing you look for? When you open a box, let's say you bought a bicycle, you bought a table, you bought some chairs, or you bought a cabinet, whatever it is. You open a box, what's the first thing you look for? Hopefully it's the directions, right? The instructions. Unless you live in my house. (laughs) My wife, when she opens a box, she does not look for the instructions. She don't look for the directions. She just start putting stuff together. And then she looks at me and go, husband, it's not working. And you know the first question I'm going to ask, well, did you look at the instructions? Did you follow the the directions? And her reply is, no. I'm like, okay, well, that's why it's not working because you didn't follow the directions. You didn't look at the instructions. That's why they're there. Hello, right? So in life, unless you shopping at Ikea, and I pray for all y'all that shop at Ikea because you are glutton for punishment and trying to put stuff together with no instructions. But when we open a package, we need to find the instructions and the directions. Now, the reason why I'm talking about that is because instructions are helpful. Directions are helpful. I know a lot of people that don't like instructions and directions, depending on who's giving it to them. But they're helpful, and it's wise to follow directions. It's wise to follow instructions. But what do we do when life gives us something without instructions? What do we do then? Where do we go? Who do we turn to? How do we fare when we get an opportunity to use our creativity? Now, we all have a level of creativity. We all have a level of gifts and talents that we've been given. Now, me, I think God has given me the ability to work on things without really looking at directions and instructions. Now, don't don't crucify me. It's true. Ask my family members. They'll let you know that I'm good with my hands and I like putting things together. But still, I'll have the instructions and directions close by just in case. I had a man I was working with years ago when we were building our church in San Diego. 
He was a general contractor. And he told me by watching me working on the construction of the building, he says, you got a good eye. He says, you have what they call a plum eye. And I'm like, what the heck is a plum eye? He says, you can, you can line things up just by looking at it without really measuring out. You can see with your natural eye, how to line things up. And I'm like, well, I'll thank God for that because I, I've, I've noticed that over the years that I can see something and I can pretty much line it up levelly. But it's still wise to have instructions and directions. Now listen, in Jesus' time, when we look at this particular verse in Scripture, and we look at these particular workers here, these, these servants, it would take nearly 20 years for a servant to earn one talent. That's a long time to be working for one talent. We don't even want to work minimum wage today. We don't want to work minimum wage. We want to work. I want $25 an hour. Well, what's your qualifications? I don't have any. What's your education? I don't have any. But you expect to make $25 an hour. How does that work? It doesn't. But here, the servants who received, the servant who received five talents of his master's property, he had a heavy responsibility to handle. He wasn't fussing and crying and complaining about, oh man, what am I going to do? I don't know what to do. Uh, I've never had this much money in my life. Uh, he didn't do that. There's nothing written that says he did that. He didn't run out and say hey look what i got i got five talents you only got two and yo man you got one talent you weren't you're not good no he didn't do none of that when you read the story and you follow each servant and what they did there's only one servant that really squandered his investment he buried his investment many of us are burying what god has given us the creativity he's given us, the talents and the gifts he's given us, we squander it, we bury it. We don't use it to its fullest potential. The other two, they went out and they invested. They did what they were going to do. They made their master proud because they took what he gave them and they pretty much got double the effort later on. And when you look at that, you have to understand that each servant had an opportunity to exercise his creativity and make his master proud, but not all of them did. You know, in my case, I like to invest. I invest in cryptocurrency. I invest in uh, homes. There's certain areas that I invest in certain homes. There's stocks that I invest in. And I try to be wise in my picking. I try to be wise in some of the investments that I have. I've had investments uh, about 13, going on 13 years now, holding on to them because I know once they hit, boom, I'm Casper the Friendly Ghost. Me and my wife are getting off the grid. We're going to take care of who we need to take care of. We're going to help who we need to help. And boom, we in the wind. That's just the way it is. But it's because what God has given me that I'm able to be creative with what he's given me, the talents and the gifts and all of that. I'm being wise with what he's given me. Are you being wise in what God has given you? Or are you squandering it, burying it under the ground and saying, oh, I know you are a strict master. You're a hard task master. No, God is not concerned about any of that. He's like, what are you doing with what I've given you? You're not wise in what I've given you. Listen, it says, by the grace of God, we have received gifts and talents to be used for his glory, not ours, for his glory. He guides us, but he leaves us without any specific instructions. Now, what do you do? God hasn't really given you any specific instructions. Now, he's given you a guideline. But what do you do? Instead, what he does, he gives us the opportunity to use our creativity to come up with ways to make him proud. Are you making him proud of his investment in you? Now, that's the question we need to ask. 
The things that God has given you, are you creatively using it to the best of your ability? Are you being wise in investing in that particular talent gift that he's given you? He's actually invested in you. So what's going to be God's return? Is there going to be a good return? Like the first, first servant here, five talents, he ended up with 10 talents. And it's like, okay, be wise in what God has given you and watch what happens. Yes, some things you're going to have to sit on for a while for it to bloom, for it to come to fruition, just like one of my investments. It's been a while and yes, I can get antsy, I can get you know, impatient, but I'm not. I'm just riding it out and just waiting because I know as soon as God allows this to happen, I know I got a lot of friends, you know, they're in the same, I help them become a part of the same investments that I'm in. And all they do is, yo, man, when's this going to happen? When is it 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 going to happen? You have to be patient in what has been given to you by God. Don't hit up God every week. When is this going to happen, God? Are you sure this is going to happen? I don't see anything happening. And that's what I get. And I'm like, just be patient. I don't know when stuff is going to happen. I don't have a crystal ball to say, okay, this is when this is going to happen. No, you just got to trust the process. Trust the system. Watch the markets. Pay attention to the news. Pay attention to what's happening. And be wise with the information you have. Be patient with what God has given you. And I'm going to close with this, guys. God, awaken my creativity. Inspire my imagination. And help me to be a good and faithful steward of the gifts and talents you have bestowed upon me. Are you being that? Are you doing that? Be wise with it, guys. This is Strength for Today's Man, Volume 47. I'm Malachi Mitchell. You guys go out there, make it a great day, be creative, be wise, and use your talents and gifts God has given you. And I'm going to definitely meet you right back here on the next podcast. You guys be blessed.